So here's another definition that we can use for a derivative, and believe it or not, it gives us the exact same thing. We just look at a limit now, instead of letting x, uh, h approach 0, we look at x approaching a, and instead of f of x plus h, we just look at f of x minus f of a. So it's a little bit of a different thing, but it's going to give us the exact same results. And by the way, there's a lot of different ways that we can talk about derivative and a lot of different ways that we can show derivative. And if you'll just look at the list in red, these are all different ways that we can look at it. And especially important for us will be dy dx and y prime. These will be, uh, we'll see these just a super bunch, and we'll also see d dx of f of x. We're going to see these a lot, a lot, lot, lot. You don't really see df dx quite as much, but it still is there. So that's just something that we need to be aware of. Uh, so what we need, we need to know what f of x is. So back over here to differentiating. We need to know what f of x is, and that's going to be the square root of x. We also need to know what f of a is. Well, that's going to be the square root of a, because everywhere we see x, we put a in its place. Now we just do this limit, this limit rule, and we're going to look at the limit as x approaches a of and then we're going to take that f of x, which is the square root of x, and minus f of a, which is the square root of a, all over x minus a. And I'm just going to leave all those guys in blue. The trouble is, when I substitute a in for all the x's, I get zeros everywhere. And I can't really do that. And this problem really is kind of strange looking. So. What we have to do is what's called um, rationalize the numerator. So we're going to take square root of x plus the square root of a. And we're going to multiply the top and bottom by this guy. And what's going to end up happening is on the top, I get no middle term. We do this for a specific purpose. I get the square root of x times the square root of x, which is x, minus the square root of a times the square root of a, which is a. There's a reason that I do this, okay? Over, and then on the bottom, I get x minus a times square root of x plus the square root of a, okay? And if you'll, if you'll notice now, my limit is cleaned up just a little bit. And again, I want to know as x approaches a what's going on. So check this out. After I have multiplied by my uh, conjugate, the x minus a's cancel, and I'm left with x minus a. No, I'm sorry, back up. I am left with 1, because a number divided by itself is 1. So I'm left with 1 over the square root of x plus the square root of a. Now, according to our limit rule, anywhere that I see uh, an x, I can put an a in. So if you'll, if you'll look right here, we want x to become what a is. So when I put that in, on the bottom over here, what this is going to be is actually going to be another square root of a. So what does that do for my problem? It tells me that I have 1 over, let's see if I can get my blues to match here. 1 over, whoa, back to the pen, 1 over 2 square roots of A. And, and uh, that, that is what my derivative uh, is going to be for this particular guy.